It's not every day someone discovers a new arm of the Milky Way. You did. Tell me about that moment, that moment of discovery. Mount Stromlo, or the Research School for Astronomy and Astrophysics, is one of the biggest and best astronomy departments in the country. We have people who study everything from planets to cosmology here. My name is Naomi McClure Griffiths, and I'm an astronomer at the Australian National University in Canberra. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, in the Deep South, but when I was five, we moved to Portland, Oregon, and that's where I grew up. I had a strange propensity for doing mathematics on foggy car windows, and I was part of a program called Talented and Gifted in the Portland Public Schools. And they would pull us out of school in order to do science experiments for an afternoon, and this was just fantastic. One time, we had to build a parachute out of some pieces of paper in order to drop an egg off of a three-story building and not break the egg. We built a parachute and that egg made it to the ground successfully. And this was just fantastic. This was so much fun. So I did a lot of little science-y things. Mum and my dad instilled in me quite early was do what you love. So be passionate about what you're doing. And if you're passionate, it doesn't matter what it is, that's the thing for you. So I always just do what I love doing. During my final year at university, uh, I was offered the chance to come to Australia in order to do research. We went out to the Parkes telescope. We observed all night, and observing at Parkes is a full body experience. You hear the telescope moving above you. You feel the building vibrate. You're in control of this most powerful radio telescope in the Southern Hemisphere, and you're pointing it at the one thing that you want to look at. I just was like a pig in mud. And at the end of that night, as the sun came up, um, we climbed up onto the edge of the dish and watched the sun rise. And I was exhausted, but it was one of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen. And at that point, I think I was pretty clear that astronomy was a fun thing to do. So radio astronomy is just a, another branch of astronomy, whereas with, we're used to astronomy in general, looking in with our eyes and visual wavelengths. We look at the wavelengths where radio waves are. So those are wavelengths that are about 20 centimeters up to several meters in length. And that comes down in, in frequency space, down into things that we're kind of familiar with, like FM radio or Bluetooth connection on your phone and your computer. Those are all in the radio frequencies. So we use a radio telescope, which is just like any other telescope. It reflects the radio waves uh, to a place where we can receive them in order to make images of the sky at radio wavelengths that we could never see with our own eyes. The Milky Way is our home galaxy. It is the band of stars that you can see that stretches across the sky. So many years ago, I was observing with the Parkes telescope and I saw something in the images, the atomic hydrogen data that I was looking at that was a bit surprising to me. Beyond the edge of where the galaxy should be, something appeared. It was very big, 70 degrees across the sky. So if you imagine the moon is half a degree and you have 140 of them stretched together, that's how big this was. And I wondered what it could be. And I created a, a little simple model of a galaxy about the same size as the Milky Way that has a pinwheel type structure. And I was astounded to discover that my little simple model matched the features I was seeing in the data almost perfectly. Suddenly, there was this feature that it was clearly a spiral arm, but we were only seeing it in the gas. I wonder if that could be right. Is that really a spiral arm? Oh, surely somebody would have thought of that before. Maybe it's a spiral arm? It must be something else. And it went on and on gradually with my confidence building that there was no other way I could explain this feature than by this quite simple idea that it had to be a new spiral arm that we'd never seen. Does this look like a good spot? Yep. Well, Dad's doing it looks amazing. We might get a nice moonrise. With luck. We had some nice viewing when we were camping, didn't we? My husband is an astronomer as well. 
Orion's up here to the north. He also works on radio telescopes, and he's the one who makes them work, and I'm the one who uses them to do the astrophysics. Does Jupiter move around the sky? Like, how often is it over there, like you said? It's like slowly moving like the other stars. But our daughter is into her own things, and she's very much into history and the arts. It's really beautiful, isn't it? The International Astronomical Union has rules for how we name things. And so in general, we don't get to come up with exciting, wonderful names. So I don't get to call it the McClure Griffiths arm, although I have two of my own arms, so I probably don't need a third. Being in research, doing research day in and day out since that time has been a passion of mine. It's the opportunity to ask a question and then look for the answer. And I get to do that over and over again, building up more and more sophisticated questions and more and more sophisticated answers. The big questions that I'd like to see answered in the next 10 to 15 years are, are things that are actually not my own specific research. I'm working on understanding how our own galaxy works, but it's just one galaxy in the scheme of billions of galaxies. And I'd like to see how those galaxies first started to form, the very beginning of the formation of galaxies. I think as an astronomer, you can't help but realize that humanity is small. What we do is important in our day-to-day -day lives and it's important to those around us and the world around us. But in the scheme of things, we're one planet around one star in one galaxy when there are billions of planets and billions of stars and billions of galaxies. 